And we're back. Um, <clears throat> welcome. We are here to uh, talk about some of the people that were a huge part of Enemy Unknown. Um, finally, let them talk directly about the work they did that was so important to the game that we made together. Um, and here we are now here with uh, Justin, who everybody calls J-Rod, you know. Do, do some people call you just Justin and not J-Rod? Because behind your back... I think my wife does. That's pretty <laughs> no, she, she calls you J-Rod. Um, uh, yes, uh. and so we're here to talk uh, about environment art, level design and environment art, and a level that was originally conceived of by Garth DeAngelis. Yes, this is, this is definitely one of the Garth specials. Right, right. Garth so, is now a producer. Yeah, yeah Garth, Garth, <laughs> Garth started as a level designer, and so this was uh, an incredible map, even looking at it, it's an incredible map that we want to talk about, but we never shipped it, and, and we'll talk about why, but um, first, let's take a look at it, and so, the map was called the Waterworks. Yeah, yeah. and uh, when we first started, why that doesn't make any sense. I, I'm just kidding. I think it was just one of these things where we thought it would be really, really cool to to fight in some sort of uh, this like utilitarian sewage processing space. Yeah, and aliens uh, were attacking the water supply. Oh yeah, they were attacking the water the, supply. That was the theory behind it, right? Yeah, yeah. That that was actually. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that because I, I think I have a couple shots here where we show some of the effects, the but narrative effects. This yeah. is. One of the first levels we took to, which, you know, at that time didn't bode well that we didn't ship it, but this is one of the first levels we took to final quality. And this mm -hmm. level looks, gr I mean, this yeah. level looks great. It yeah. still looks great. I mean, at that time when we were getting levels, um, there's only a few that we were working on. And the level designers were taking, they were using little blocks to kind of build these uh, very small blocks. We didn't have uh, level design kits at the time. So uh, Garth cooked up this map and, and thought it would be really neat to try out a big vertical space in the center and have the player try, like almost basically corkscrew around the map uh, and find their way back to, I guess, push a button up top? I can't remember the Yeah, the there was some sort of mission. But. Yeah, some sort of gameplay. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, there's always, um, and, and we didn't know if like the mission objectives would be enough, so we thought or we didn't really have mission objectives. They were kind of sweeps in Enemy Unknown. And so we thought maybe does every level need a gimmick? And so we're like, yeah, there's going to be, you're either going to flood in sewage or something equally disgusting yeah. or, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but this was, this was a really great map. And, you know, even though we didn't ship it, it was, a, it was definitely a laboratory for um, the environment team at the time and for many of the other sub-disciplines. Um, we really spent a long time in here figuring out how we were going to make some of these maps and how we were going to take the level design uh, maps, the levels, and and make art from what they had given us. Um, so I was, at the time, I was a junior right. artist. You guys yeah. get these gray boxes. You don't even know what some of those things oh, are, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. We heard this, this, this was waterworks, and we were like, <laughs> what are we going to do to make this look like a waterworks? Water, yeah. obviously. Yeah, water. So, water. But, uh, yeah, we, we went through, and uh, at the time, I was a junior artist, and I was tasked with... Uh, taking all these small pieces that Garth used to build and, and, and merging them together into walls and floors and, and making sense of them. And then at that point, we started cutting them out and adding stairs and ramps where we saw fit. And a lot of the ramps that you see here in some of the uh, assets. Uh, this, and that's the start of the map, right? You started yeah. outside. This, was, the, yep, you started this outside. map was bonkers. It was great. I mean, it was a great map. It was fun to play it, but it was, it was bonkers. Look how big this is for a normal EU map. You started up here, yep. and you went down, and you had to wrap around. And, oh and you go God, into that little up. office, right? And yep. then there's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. there's and you can even play in the, the little fenced area over here. Yep, yep. Our maps ended up being pretty linear because of, again, you, you make a lot of stuff because you don't. I did, when we were making this map, I think I had just come up with the two-number system. I mean just come up with the two-number system yeah. that you see there. Right and, there. Yeah. and so we didn't. a lot of the game rules weren't set at all, so people are having to do the best they could without solid um, design. It's, but I think it gives you stuff where this was kind of a corkscrew, like you say, yeah. and, that, and this was one of the things that taught us, like, okay, we need to make our maps a little more directional, basically. Yeah, and even at that time when we were still figuring out some design uh, cues and qualities you guys were tuning up what we were doing we were spending a lot of that time figuring out like how much ambient animation we could get in what type right. of landmarking we could do with the maps so you see actually one of the this is one of my favorite effects that our effects artist Jam uh, steve jameson made out of all the XCOM games and this was made for this map where it was uh the aliens were basically pumping poison into the water supply and that was one of that was yeah. what the mission was to stop this and uh it's just this really kind of cool running of colors into the water and uh, I, I try to look for a video of it because it's just really awesome. Maybe one of these days I'll find it. But um, 
Yeah, it's like, what do you, what do you call that? What is the effect on the, it's not chromatic aberration. What is it? That's the effect of like the oil slick on the water. Greg, I assume yeah, you know yeah. this, you're an art director. So <laughs> I'm so, I'll oil stop slick. talking and you say what the, you slick. say what it is. <laughs> say what it is. But yeah, this is fun. You can kind of see too, uh, even at this point, we started to uh, have a discussion about standardizing our heights of mm -hmm. uh, what the levels were. We, we, we noticed that this map was getting complicated and we, uh, multiple times adjusted the heights of this to, to make it uh, more readable for play. Yeah. Even to the point of you can see where the ramps are and, and some of the ladders and stairs, we started color coding them with uh, orange and yellow. Well, and also the metal girders were like reinforced walls or something. There were things we couldn't crack, right? They yes. Didn't, and so there was something we are doing there where we couldn't actually like break those. One yeah. thing I should say, just so everybody knows, is that uh, the councilman, our council spokesman, is actually in Twitch chat right now. Uh -oh. or on YouTube, YouTube chat right now. So, <laughs> yeah, so he is there, he's watching, and um, I'm, I'm not even going to make the joke. Um, but, yeah, but, yeah, so he's there. Awesome. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, so, yeah, I mean, th this is this is such a shame when I see this, too, because it was, it was fun to play. It was gorgeous. I mean, this is a really gorgeous map. Yeah. It was really dramatic. Um, I still remember the sort of waterfall he did there. Yeah. But one of the problems was that we were just working on, like, height cutting down and things like that. And this central area here, yeah. one of the reasons why this map didn't go was that we actually didn't have the tech to cut down. Like they were like, what's on the inside of that space? We're like, I don't know. Yeah. Can you just rotate the camera? No. So yeah, so unfortunately. Yeah, we tried silhouette, we tried, you know, we tried a couple of things and just yeah. wasn't feeling right. But there was a lot of things we took away from this. The the ambient animation of the little glowy bits of smoke and and, and trying to get those landmarks. Modular pipe the, kit. The modular yeah. pipe kit, w w which we used for the rest of the game. The railings, yeah. That, a lot of kit work. A lot, yeah. I mean, the, so the process for these levels a lot of times was design, level design. We would say, here's the theme for this map. Yeah. Um, and, we, and then we just give you this like nasty gray box of all kinds of weird, you know, and it's paced yeah. out properly for. The movement distance of soldiers and flanking angle, angles and things like that. And then the really difficult part, and obviously it's best when, you know, uh, an environment artist works with the level designer to come up with those ideas together and kind yeah. of like work back and forth. The really difficult part for you guys is saying like, nah, yeah, you have to make that represent reality. Plus, yeah, right angles everywhere too. Yeah, I mean, th I think one of the fun things though about this map was at the time, it was very abstract, and it allowed us to kind of really push and pull with different visual details and, and see what, what worked and what felt yeah. fun. At, right at, angles fit here, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice when cemeteries, yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. the city, like uh, the UFO maps were way harder because you're talking about organic stuff, but like, because yep. yep. um, you have all that nature, but like the cities and industrial spaces like this, cemeteries, lots of like right angle, you know, it's great. I love cemeteries because it's like, yeah, it's flanking everywhere. So, but you yeah. can, yeah, it, it actually fits here. It, it, you know. Yeah, it's cool. And the other thing was too, is that even after we went to, uh, through that whole um, pipeline of making waterworks and we found out that it didn't really work, we went again and tried to use the same assets and try to create other industrial type maps for X2, I mean X1 EU. And um, unfortunately they didn't work either. It's, it kind of suffered from the same problems. Yep. Um, but we we really had fun kind of working through some Darn of these that's maps. pretty though. Yeah, yeah this is mm -hmm. the oil refinery. We had used the same kit and a lot of the same textures from um, uh, Waterworks. What were and they doing at the oil refinery? Do we remember? I don't know. I think remember. they were setting bombs. Yeah, they were setting bombs. Yeah, oh, was, this yeah. was. This was a bomb yep. mission. That's yep. right. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, because there was three, and all, I think all two or three of them were in industrial yeah, sectors. Yeah. But it, these were f fun little things to create. I mean, at the time, too, I was a junior artist, really only working on prop work, and that was my first time getting into a map and actually uh, being overwhelmed of looking at an mm. entire space to create. So that was quite a ride. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It, yeah. was, it was really cool, and um, the good news is is that you know even though these things didn't work um, in the EU, we ended up finally finding a way to get industrial and sewer type of stuff in to uh, um, War of the Chosen. So yeah. we have the tunnels and the it's sewers. It's our theme, man. It's our yeah. constant theme. We try something, and then you yeah. know. I mean, even the the little pipes right here in the picture that are angled were little kit bashes that I did with another artist, Brian Mahoney's pipe work that he worked on in Waterworks. And that inspired me to create the pipe kits um, in sewers. So, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So it That's all comes shame. back. Now I see this. Yeah. Now I want this. So. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, yeah. this this one was actually really cool because in the distance too there was smoke and big smokestacks and was is this playable anywhere like, yes is this... they are playable really I, I attempted to try to get them for the stream but it was it, you have to go go digging a oh my bit. god but yeah, i was okay. i was hoping there's there's still a big hope of mine of one day to sit down with garth and you and play through these because they were they were All a right. blast <laughs> yeah so well that's awesome greg how do, how do you direct like level like as opposed to like your very very hands-on concept very hands-on character development and then level same amount um less so now um you know i think now that we've kind of figured out the systems like like yeah. while the systems are being developed it gets very because how do you obey the system still make it look good and that back and forth and what's important and then but uh but yeah i mean i think like now it's kind of now that everybody kind of understands um kind of the the the, the things that go into making an xcom level and like distances and cover placement and um it's it's a whole lot less thing it's more about the feel of it it was probably the, yeah that one's probably the smooth it's like the most independent group yeah. because we have these rules and the the rules between enemy unknown and x2 didn't change that much mm -hmm. in terms of soldier mobility and things like that yeah. so yeah i feel like environment kind of hit the ground running yeah. you know you have to you kind of have to hard reset and so environment kind of gets to you know the, we have we're blessed with a team that understands the game rules, you know, and so it's it's nice when um, that, that sort of they, once they understand it, then they have the freedom to sort of work within. Well, you embrace you right. embrace the you know the grid. You got you know if you fight it, it's it's impossible. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know the UFOs are round because again we wanted something that was like familiar, right? They had to be right. round. They had to be disc. We played with them being square at one point, and I mean you remember that like oh, yeah. really yeah. weird stuff. Oh, but it was yeah. like it didn't read as a UFO. Yeah. That but force field the roundness force field was a revelation. It. That was a revelation yeah. when we added the force field to the to yeah, make was, them round. It was, was, it was the thing. coolest idea ever because it's like you know it's still round, but when you look at it, it's it's actually a plus sign, right? And yep. so, uh, but it rounded it out and didn't affect gameplay at all. It didn't affect line of sight. It was it was purely a cosmetic thing that rounded a square shape. All right. So yeah. you, yeah, environment artists, what are your favorite maps on EU? On EU? Oh, okay. I, I really only know their dev names, really, but yeah. They're, they're, oh, okay. give us the dev names. So, like, it's the uh, small crashed UFO. It's in the woods, and um, it's crashed into, like, a, a very small running river. Yeah. That's one of my mm -hmm. favorite. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. work a lot on that, um, but I just really liked the opening. Yeah, it's sort of like you have the through-the-river approach and the yeah. ankle-deep water. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm really partial to waterworks, <laughs> even though it didn't ship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, no, the... Um, to go back and... Tell you what, why don't you list all the maps in order? Yeah. Uh, and we'll check them against people on Twitch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just but Small kidding. Cemetery was great. Um, rooftops was amazing. I really liked the lighting of rooftops at the yeah, time. Rooftops, yeah. You, yeah. Man, you forget about some of this. Um, Jeez. And I worked a lot on Alien Base with um, with Orion Bertram and some oh, of the other guys. Goodness. And uh, uh, Temple Ship. Those yeah. were like the big... That At the time, at that, at that point, it was like, okay, I started to feel comfortable about my work and and how to make kits and how to make tiling textures and how to just kind of like work on everything. Yeah. And I spent a, a, a good amount of time in those maps and they were fun. Yeah. 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 The Alien Base and Temple Ship, uh, yeah, they, they were kind of a cool mix of like experimentation and trying to figure yeah. out some fun stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you. Yeah. Thank Jay you. Ron, Jay Rod for, for coming on. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah. And so thanks everybody for kind of going down uh, memory lane with us. This is like super fun for us, us old folks, you know, looking back at the glory days. Uh, glory days are in front of us, of course, you know, but we've had, <laughs> we've had some good days behind us as well. Um, so uh, obviously we're, we're doing these retrospective streams. The next one is going to be next Tuesday. Um, and, you know, as we always say, you know, pay attention to the social media channels because we will have a few surprises leading up um, in, the, in the next couple of weeks. So. Um, but thank you for joining us, um, and we hope to talk to you again next Tuesday.